Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk to you about um, visions. So a lot of times when people hear vision, they think, you know, this big, grandiose, like, revelation type of vision where, you know, the room just opens up and you're like, in a vision, you're inside of it. It's like, you know, I don't know, like virtual reality, that type of thing. But a lot of times what people don't understand is, is that they have visions and don't even realize that they're having a vision. And it happens more often times than what I think people are, are aware of. So the way that I could describe a vision, it's like, yeah, you can have the big grandiose visions where you actually walk into the vision or you're just sitting there and you, the whole room just opens up. You can have visions like that. But what I find is more common and everybody's different. You might be the type of person or prophet um, who just has visions like that on a regular basis. But what I find is that people have visions where, let's just say you're relaxing somewhere and you're just laying on the bed or, or something like that. You close your eyes, you're not asleep or anything, but you just close your eyes, you're just resting or whatever. And you'll see something like in your mind's eye, as they say, like in your mind's eye, or you'll be thinking something and you can just visualize like, say you're thinking of roses or whatever. Like, you really like the smell of roses. And you just close your eyes and you just visualize that rose. And you see a picture of it. And you know it's just something that, that your mind is, you know, conjuring up. And it's just a fleeting sight. And that's what happens a lot of times when you get visions from God. It's just something playing across your the screen of your mind. Um, another way I could liken it is like, say you're staring at something for a really, really long time. Let's say it's a neon uh, sign, uh, uh, something that maybe a sign that says open and you just stared at it and you closed your eyes. You would still see that sign um, with your eyes closed. You just kind of get an impression. Well, it's the same thing with a vision of the mind. I call them visions of the mind. And I get them from time to time. It's just, a, you know, it's just like a little small snapshot. I, I don't want to say it's like a still picture. A lot of times the picture is in action. It's moving. Or sometimes it is just a, a still picture, like a snapshot. So this one particular vision that I had is... I was, you know, I wasn't really doing anything. I wasn't really praying or anything like that. My mind was on God, but my mind nine times out of 10 is on God. Um, not saying that I'm holier than thou or anything like that, but I, I hadn't always been like that, but I've gotten to the point where my mind is constantly on God. Um, I'm a, basically addicted to God. So, I constantly think about God, but, um, I'm talking about like, you know, a focused concentration. Like I went up into the room, um, into my, my prayer room to just pray and receive whatever God wanted to tell me. And so I closed my eyes and what I saw was a plant and that plant was being infested with some type of insect. And um, I was like, wow, that's not really a pretty picture. It's like the, whatever these insects were, they were just devouring the, um, the plant. It was a big plant. And I said, wow, that doesn't seem like a really nice vision. You know, I wanna see, I don't know, a butterfly or something like that. But no, I saw this plant being devoured. So, Anytime you have a vision, you have to ask God, um, well, 
you you have to ask God, like, what does this mean? And if you don't get a straight up answer, if you don't get a like a rainbow word of what what does this mean, then you have to turn to the Bible, the logos. You have to turn to the Bible to say, um, where have I seen something like this? Where have I seen a plant uh, being devoured? And at first I was like, there's nowhere in the Bible I could think of that would have something like that. But then, and this is the good thing about having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, I believe it was the Holy Spirit that just brought it to my mind. Um, Jonah, in the book of Jonah, there was a part in there where a plant was being um, basically devoured by a worm. And I said, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? I hope this vision is not telling me anything um, bad about myself. And we got to get to the point where we get over being corrected. Like, God wants to work on our character. We need to get used to that. There's always going to be some things that, that needs work. So I, with that knowledge, I said, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? Whatever it is, you know, I'm listening. I'm willing to obey. I know it's probably got something to do with my character because everyone knows how Jonah's attitude was stank um, in regards to preaching and teaching to the people of Nineveh, calling them to repentance. So I'm like, what could God be possibly telling me about this? Because I love to preach and teach. Um, I just love it. So I'm like, I don't know what God is trying to say here. But then when I read it, it opened up to me. So I want to go to Jonah chapter four. And let's see. It, the, the backstory of this, and everyone knows about Jonah, how he he um, was basically told by God to go preach to the Ninevites. And he didn't want to go because he was like, I guess in his mind, he felt like these people were just wicked. So, like, why go? Um, long story short, you know, he got, he was in the belly of the well for three days and three nights or whatever. And then um, he repented, got got spewed out onto the land and he preached to the people and they ended up repenting. And at the end of all that, Jonah was like mad because he was like, God, I knew you was going to be merciful and I knew you was going, these people was going to repent and then you was going to be like, okay, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And you all good. And I knew you was going to do that. And so Jonah was angry about that. And so that's where we pick up, um, this, this is where we pick up in Jonah 4, verse 7. Well, let's go to 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah and he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, dost thou, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd. For that which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein is more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? So Jonah was upset and had pity for a, a gourd for a plan and it's like you know God has mercy on who he has mercy on and with God is 
what God is saying in this, and for me in particular, in that in this time in my life, what God was saying was that, you know, there are people in, in my life at that particular time who had basically hurt me so bad. And I mean, they, they really like took their knife and dug it in and turned it and poured salt in it and... You know, it was just really bad. And I'm just like, the natural person would say, you know what? These people don't deserve any type of mercy. Like, God, do you see what they did to me? They des- they deserve, like, the worst of the worst. You know what I mean? And it could be, I want you guys to look at it at yourself, you know, this is just my experience. What I'm not get, I'm not getting to specifics, but this is my experience. Um, but I want you to look at yourself. You know, if there was something or someone that did something to you that really made you feel like you were justified to like not forgive them, or you were justified to not pray for that person for how they did you, and um. We all have our stories. We all have things that we can say that people did to us. And, um, you know, in your heart of hearts, you're thinking they don't deserve nothing. Like, they don't deserve to be spit on if they was on on fire. Like, that that type of stuff. Like, um, uh, divorce or something. Like, say somebody cheated on you or, you know people talked about you and said horrible things or people in your job, you know, they, they, um, undercut you and just defamed your name, whatever it could be, you know, even things where, you know, maybe your mother or father was just abusive and horrible as you were growing up, you still have to forgive and pray for them not saying you go out and be their best buddy but you still have to go ahead and forgive them so God was showing me that I still had some issues in my heart um in regarding to a situation that I had and um what I had to do was I had to forgive them but you may ask, well, how do you do that? How do you forgive them? Because I was saying, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I'm willing to forgive them. But in my heart of hearts, I was still holding stuff. And the way you do that is, is you submit your will to God. You say, God, I am willing to do this. God, I want to do this. But my heart is still holding on. Um, I I can't control my heart, Lord. You, But you know that I want to forgive and I want to be pleasing to you, God. And God will honor the honesty and the sincerity of that type of prayer. And what he'll do is he'll come alongside of you. The Holy Spirit will come alongside of you and partner with you to uh, to help heal and help, help you to uh, genuinely forgive uh, the people in your life.